There's nothing quite like the real Daytona, that's for sure. But if you're like me and you don't have the room, you don't have the money to pick up a Daytona, then maybe you want to do what I've done here and that's set up a emulated version and even have you know the twin play going. So I'm going to show you now how I've set this up and how it works and uh, you know maybe it will inspire you to do something similar. Now I've currently got two screens up here and you can see that you know I've got the um, see the Windows menu bar gives it away a little bit <laughs> that this is all virtualized. Uh, can of course run this full screen without that but having two at the same time you're stuck with the menu bars. I did actually look at a couple of programs to try and remove that and I think there is a way of doing that. I know that there's another program. I tried one um, called Borderless Gaming I think it is but that it takes the top menu bar away but makes it full screen so that's no good there is another one that I've used previously in the past, so I might look into that. But regardless, it's pretty cool like that, even with the menus there, it's fine. Plays great. Um, two players playing simultaneously. <laughs> awesome. And uh, I've currently got it set up on the Xbox uh, controllers. Can can get it working with the steering wheels, um, but I haven't played around with a lot of that now. Um, but it's something that you can certainly go. I'll show you where the settings are anyway. You can perhaps look at that yourself, but you can certainly get it going with some Xbox controllers. And we can have up to eight running simultaneously, actually off the one PC. <laughs> now I haven't actually tried all the way up to eight um, in terms of processing. It doesn't seem to slow down as you start adding them. I have gone up, gone up to three, so I'll show you show you three after we do this little um, demo with uh, with two running at the moment. So I'm going to. Flick over to a um, picture in picture shot and uh, let's talk about this a little bit more. Right guys, so the first thing I want to talk about is uh, the controller setup. So uh, as I mentioned before, I thought that we wouldn't be able to actually control both screens because you know in Windows you can only have one window active and such. But look, it turns out that uh, any application that's running will allow you know, background communication with controllers. So it doesn't have to be in the foreground to actually pick up a, uh, a controller as such. Now, if you were using keyboard input, that would be different. It, I, I believe it would require the window to be in focus. So you need to, to think about that if you're thinking about using a, uh, like a keyboard uh, encoder with a particular setup that you might do. So that's the first thing. Uh, I've managed to map all the buttons, including the view change buttons, uh, to a couple of Xbox controllers. Now, this emulator uh, supports natively the Xbox 360 controllers. I'm not sure if it, they would also work with the Xbox One controllers under Windows 10. That's probably something that needs to be tested. That certainly works with the 360. Now, out of the box, when you load this emulator, it's not actually set up for Xbox 360 controllers. It's actually set up for just, it has got analog in there, but you still have to switch the analog on. I'll show you all this in a minute. Um, and that analog may be able to be used with some of the, you know, steering wheels. I think the Logitech is one that's mentioned, so that might be sort of out of the box supported as well. So anyway, with the controllers, guys, you might have to do a little bit of jigging around to get the you know controllers working. But if you do have some 360 controllers, um, I've got a little you know bought off eBay a wireless you know USB connector, you know, straight in, load the Microsoft driver for it, and off you go. So. Uh, we you know we won't cover all the details of that. That's something that you guys can can work out. So let's have a look at what we have going on in front of us here. So two emulators running, um, communicating via network on the same PC though. So effectively, it's using the same IP address, but just using different port numbers to communicate between the two machines. Again, I'll show you how that works in a minute. But first of all, let's just let's just pop into a game here. Right, so I'm going to put a coin in and I'm using the back button on the controllers to put a coin in each machine, <laughs> each virtual machine. So let's get this started. And we will do the beginner. And we'll select manual just because it makes you go a little bit faster actually. Don't really need, on the beginner track you don't really need manual. 
you're really sitting in fourth gear or third gear most of, well, fourth gear most of the time, unless you crash, of course. Now, I'm, I'm not going to be able to control both cars here very effectively, but I just want to show, show you how um, it does actually work independently. So you can see on the left here, let me just control the left car, the red car. You can see me uh, controlling that nicely. The blue car is stopped at the moment. I'm in help if I changed out of gear. Okay, great, get it sorted. Right, third gear, fourth gear. Okay, and we are happily cruising around. And look, the, the control is a little bit sensitive. You have to get used to that. Uh, but once you do, it works really, really well. Hop onto the other controller. Let the other one crash there. I'll change gear. What am I doing? Here we go. Get the second. Up into third. Up into fourth. I just mapped the... Um, I'll look down there. I just mapped the... Uh, the um, X, Y, A and B buttons to be the four uh, gears. That works pretty well. So yeah, as you can see guys, completely independent, linked play, <laughs> fantastic. So let's, um, let's stop showing you this and now let's get into the actual detail of how this is set up. So what I'm going to do is I'll just close down these two emulators and let's get into how this actually works so what i've got guys is um, the model 2 emulator and you can get this i'll just fire this up here it's called m2 model 2 emu under help here it's got the there's actually a link to the website there but under the about that's the uh, address so head over there and, and pick it up. It's easy to install. I won't cover all of that because that's all uh, on the website, of course. So you will need that. Now you will need the Daytona USA ROMs. I can't obviously uh, show you exactly where to get those, but uh, I'm sure you can use Google to find the relevant ROMs. And that's it, really. Once you've got the emulator installed and you've got the ROM, uh, the ROMs go in the in the ROMs folder. And there's not a huge amount you need to change, but there is something, if you want to use the Xbox 360 controllers, you do need to go into this uh, INI file here. And in this file, there is under input, there's X input, uh, and that's normally set to zero, I think, by default. So you will have to change that to one if you want to use Xbox 360 controllers. There is, uh, you know, it does actually support force feedback effects, and of course I haven't, you know, gone down that path, but I know someone who's actually, there's been a few people that actually use this emulator in Daytona machines, actually even with Daytona hardware, and, and one guy even integrated up the force, original force feedback on the on his Daytona machine to run with the emulator. So, again, this is a, this is a solution that really can bring back a dead Daytona if you don't have, you know, the ability to fix your board sets, or you don't, you can't find a board set if you've got the missing... Um, a great way to preserve the, the, the game and have it just running off a PC instead. And, and the emulation's pretty, pretty accurate. Um, I can't pick anything obvious that's different. So anyway, you need to set that up there. And once you do that, um, the other thing you need to do is if you want to run multiple instances, which we have here, you know, we've got two running. What you, what you do is after you've set this up, um, you copy that whole directory and make another directory so you can see I've got another one here called model 2 player 2 and model 2 player 3 which is a direct copy of the of the first one and there's a reason for that because obviously you need to fire up two instances um, but also each instance looks at its own network file which needs to be in the in the directory to determine which machine it's going to talk to next and uh, and so I'll show you that uh, as well now so by default when you do install the model 2 directory you don't get this uh, file here which is m2 network.ini so you need to create that and it's a very basic file we go in here and edit it this is what it looks like in the first model 2 directory so really simple little network setup here. 
and all it's saying is that this this is the receipt port uh, on uh, 1978. The next IP is actually the IP address of this machine. So this next IP would be your IP address of your machine, and there's ways of finding out that. I won't go into that now, but you'll be able to find out your IP address, I'm sure. So you just need to put that in there, and then the next port, you just need to create what the next port number is, which would be the next machine. And so we'll see the next machine receive port will be 1979 um, and effectively the way that Daytona works is a token ring network so it passes the packets network packets from machine to machine in a ring effectively back down to the first machine so yeah so that's all you need to have set up in there and in fact these instructions um, for setting this up are in this there's, there's a guide that comes with it and if I just open that up there's quite a comprehensive guide here and it talks about uh, this the setup for for multiplayer here and even you know how to set up an eight game across a network but there's a few things that's slightly missing in here which I will talk about hopefully and make a little bit clearer for you guys uh, here um, and I'm pretty sure in this document it's where it refers to saying that you can't really you know even though you could run uh, here we go it says so it says here in the instruction one PC multiple instances it says although it is impossible to actively play a two or more player game on one PC you can emulate a multiplayer setup uh, so I think that's interesting because you can <laughs> you can actually play uh, multiple so I don't know why that's the why that's in that instructions maybe it wasn't updated and this was a, a feature that was added uh, as part of the the update which I think is 1.1 a um, so in fact let me just check that just to make sure that you guys get the right version because I believe where is it under about here yeah 1.1a okay so that's the version that you need to play so other than what I'm telling you here you can yeah can read through those instructions and it also talks about how this is set up so the difference between running this on a single PC and having multiple PCs is that with this uh, network set up down here and instead of uh, changing the port numbers you change the IP addresses so the port numbers actually stay the same and uh, you then just increment the or, ch or ch change the IP to the IP of the next machine in the token ring all right so that's uh, the setup for that one and I'll just leave this little guy over to the left here now I'm going to flick back to emulators for my copy complete copy of exactly the same thing if I open up the network any file here we shall see that uh, like I said before we can see that the receive port 1979 which is the next port from the previous machine and then the next port on this one goes back to the receive port of the first machine so hopefully that makes sense guys it's not not too difficult all right so that's the uh, the second machine how that's set up and of course if we wanted to continue this to a third and I can show you that because I did do a third uh, machine just as a, as a test all right so that's that's all you need to do for the configuration of the emulator in relation to the networking side of things um, we've already talked about enabling the Xbox 360 controller so from an emulator side that's really all you have to do now when we get into running the machine so I'm going to run the second emulator here remember under the second directory so I'll fire that up and then I'll just bring that over this side so we don't get them mixed up get this out of the way and then the next thing we need to do is load the ROMs now when you're doing it loading these ROMs with a multiple setup there's a couple of things you need to be aware of the first thing is is that the ROMs themselves have a set you know set up within them to allow you to select the type of machine that you've got uh, and the way that it's configured if it's a standalone or if it's part of a you know a link system so what we want to do is we want to have one of the machines set up as a master and we want one of the machines set up as a slave and in fact the way that Daytona works is that you have one master and multiple slaves so if you've got right up to eight machines all the rest of them would be set and configured as slave machines the second thing you need to be uh, aware of is that when I've done my testing it didn't seem to make a lot of difference when you just got two machines but if you've got more than two machines running 
you need to make sure the slave machines turn on first. Get all the slave machines up first and then run the emulator for the master machine last. Otherwise, I had some problems with some of the slave machines coming up uh, if I did it with the master first. So I'm going to come over to the slave machine here on the right, go to emulator, I'm going to go to load ROM, and we're going to load up the Daytona USA ROM. And you'll see here that the way that this machine is configured is as a slave, and the car number is number two, and then the cabinet type is upright, that doesn't really matter, and the country and so forth, normal difficulty. Uh, the advertised sound off, that's that Daytona, <laughs> which goes on and on and on, if you've got that on. Uh, classic sound, of course. So, yeah, and you can see it's sitting here, network checking, and it's just waiting, effectively, for the master to come online. So if we go over to the emulator on this side, do the load ROM, and now we can see that this one is master and car number one and it's doing its little network checking and you'll see once it actually ah straight in sometimes when you get when it's got more than the the two when i have the three for example it sits there for a little while and that network network checking stops on each machine as it gets detected and then they fire up so we can see here now we've got our machines ready to run and i'm just you know just resizing them uh, to suit and, uh, and guys, that's it. And it doesn't really matter if you do that. You know, when I move these windows around, it sort of stops the emulation on one side and they sort of, it looks like they get out of sync. It doesn't seem to matter. I think as the token ring sends its packets around about where each machine's at, it, the machine just updates and, uh, and catches up. So, uh, so that's no problem. So that's uh, about it in terms of getting the emulation going. I'll show you the control configuration. So let's hop into configuration controls here of player two. And of course, um, same with player one, although obviously we'd, we're using joystick one and joystick two. And when you come in here initially, actually these check boxes aren't checked. So you need to check those because that provides you with analog uh, for steering, acceleration and brake. And then when you click on that, you can then select, and you can see that there's a gamepad number two, so you can select your gamepads. Now, the first thing to note is that it nat natively supports the four, f up to four Xbox 360 controllers. So, by rights, I could, you know, have a four-screen setup here and have four players running no problem off the one machine, which, which is just crazy. <laughs> it's just awesome. Uh, and maybe you can, you know, with 5, 6, 7 and 8, you could use the other settings like the analog settings or, you know, have one running off, you know, effectively a keyboard. That, would be, that wouldn't be that would be great, obviously. But there's, there should be a way, I think, of using just the standard analog settings. That's by turn, in that settings area, in that settings file, turning that Xbox off to zero. It changes this to just like a standard analog. And I think that's what you use for standard steering wheels and stuff. And maybe you can get a couple of Logitechs and it detects them differently. I don't know. I haven't gone that far yet, guys. Uh, but hey, you get four going, sitting back on a couch with 360 controllers. That's pretty damn good. That's pretty damn good. So yeah, so you select your controller there and um oops and we've got a crash all right well okay occasionally i found that 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 happens uh not always so don't don't panic <laughs> uh if that does happen just hop in there and and uh and try again and obviously i'll need to restart the emulation here anyway because it's going to be would have lost uh, network uh completely so let's load that ROM and, and the controls, by the way, are specific for each uh, ROM, so you need to set them up uh, specifically inside each ROM. So we'll just let this fire up and let it connect. There we go. And go back into configure controls. Now, the funny thing was actually, well, it's not funny, but uh, I noticed on my setup when I didn't have the Xbox 360 control set up and I went in here and, and clicked on the, what was showing here, which was just analog controls, uh, it would crash every time actually when I tried to change that. So I don't know if that's specific to you know my setup and you're going to have the same issue or not, um, but it doesn't seem to crash as much with the 360 controls, obviously just did then, but um, it shouldn't now. So 
Yeah, so within the uh, axes here, you can see you've got different things you can set up, which is effectively the sticks or the uh, the D-pad. Obviously, you wouldn't want the D-pad for your uh, steering controls, but you've got the left and right trigger down the bottom here for the back acceleration and brake. So, so yeah, that's what I've got um, set up on here is uh, effectively the gears, as I said, gear one, gear two, gear three, gear four, uh, left and right on here, uh, I've got the uh, start button here, I've got the coin button on the back and then on the uh, the back buttons here I've got the acceleration and the brake um, buttons as you know analog controls so it works really really well, great setup. So that's the controllers all set up, so yeah that's that's as um, hard as it gets, guys, to, to, to set that up. I mean, it's not, it's not difficult at all, right? And then you're off and racing and, and playing link play. Now, the other thing that you can do is that with this emulator, you can run it full screen. And when you run it full screen, you actually get all the benefits of it using some of your graphics card capabilities for anti-aliasing and all the rest of it. So you can actually make this game look superb. You can't do it in the window... Uh, shots like this, but if you had multiple individual PCs and you wanted to upscale the graphics and have really nice anti-aliasing, you could run, you know, this linked, networked, uh, full screen, and then you're going to get the full anti-aliasing uh, happening. So <clears throat> why don't we do that now? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimise uh, the second player. It doesn't really matter. I could just have it sitting in the background. I guess it doesn't really matter, but it's still actually running. And then on the first one here, I'll go to switch to full screen. And you'll see straight away that the graphics here are, are, are pretty pretty awesome. You're still going to get some, you know, little bit of jaggies around the, the text there. But anything that's drawn in terms of the 3D polygon graphics are all going to now have all your beautiful graphic, uh, graphics card effects. And it's super smooth. Look at that. It's absolutely smooth. And look at those cars. Look at the lines on those cars, it's really, really nice. So <laughs> this is really like a massive upgrade to the original game, um, having it you know, scaled, up, scaled with these uh, really nice graphic smoothing effects and anti-aliasing. So I'm going to have a, a, a little game here, and what's going to happen is I'm going to put in a coin, and uh, I'll just use the be beginner uh, track. And you can see it's got waiting for other challenge challenges, so it actually waits for a little bit because the other other machine is sitting there, ready for someone to put a coin in to join in with this race. And the way the link plays work is that if that person doesn't join in, then you just start, and then they can play an individual game themselves. I'm going to head over here to manual, and we're going to play the standard beginner track. Now this is the track that I always used to play, and you know I guess I, I don't know why. I guess, I mean, it's the easiest track, and when this game first came out, I think you sort of wanted to have the, the, the easiest track to start off with. The other tracks are actually really cool, but I, I really, this is the first time I've really actually played the other tracks in this game, is through emulation. Um, which is bizarre, I know, but that's just, you know, when you're putting money into the machine, you sort of, you look at those number of laps and you think you're getting a shorter experience on the medium and hard settings because they're shorter a number of laps but they're, they're longer of course and they're, they're much more interesting but having said that this track here I mean this is this is the classic track and you know you can slow down on this one corner here but other than that you're pretty much um, flat stick uh, around all the other corners now having you know 40 cars going all at the one you know, going all at once, you've got, you know, this sort of situation where there's opportunity for carnage. Cars can can uh, can can flip out and, you know, jump out. Even yours can flip over uh, midway racing, depending on what happens. And the cool thing there is, is that that doesn't always happen. So it sort of happens, you know, occasionally enough for it to be a, a unique sort of feature that you have a massive pileup. Um, I've had some pretty crazy sort of... Um, situations where I've skipped between a car and you know one's flown over the top of me and it's just been like really amazing you know exciting head-to-head -head racing and and this is the thing with this game right you've got cars going everywhere all the time around you 
Uh, when you do have another player, we talk because it's got the sort of catch up mode, so it sort of allows the other person to catch up a little bit. It just keeps the gameplay really, really tight. It doesn't spoil it at all. You know, this is a fun game, guys. This is an, <laughs> this is by no means a, you know, Daytona simulation. Um, this is just awesome, awesome fun. So while I'm yakking on here, I'm on to lap six of eight. And what, what am I getting? Um, I've got quite a bit of time on the extension here, so hopefully I'll make it through to the full eight laps. I don't always make that, especially if I get a massive crash. I probably shouldn't say that, because these guys can get a little bit aggressive. But let's see if we can... Whoops! Oh, wee! And see that the car's spin out like that, so cool. And you, you, you get back racing straight away, you know. Sometimes you smash like that and spin around and you just get back racing and that's what keeps the game play just, you know, fast and fast and furious. <laughs> so, oh, what are we up to here? Eight, eight seconds, the last second. Am I going to make it? Actually, I might not make it. I took that last one a little bit close. Am I going to get there? Oh, just made it on the final one. Hit the goal and got 12. And look, it's a, this is not the same, clearly this is not the same experience to having the wheel, the vibration on the wheel and, and being in a cabinet. Um, but this is, this is pretty damn good. <laughs> when I first had this set up, I you know, started playing it and I thought that maybe you know, after a few games I might you know, sort of tire of it. It's actually been the reverse. I actually wanted to keep playing it and play it and play it, and then I started getting into the other other tracks. It started really, really enjoying it. So this is a keeper, guys. This is uh, this is awesome. I mean, I can have this running here, get get a bit of the Daytona USA experience without taking up the room, uh, now, without the expense. Um, I mean, clearly, as I said, if I had the room and had the, had the, the funds to do it, that machine is one that needs to be in your collection. Uh, so if you get the opportunity and you have the means to do it, man, get get this game. This is super fun. As I said, that really surprised me because even single player, it is a lot more fun than I than I sort of remember. And I guess that's because I always used to play it twin play, and it was awesome fun then. But I'm loving it single play. It's going to be great uh, playing this with some other people kicking back on the couch here. And yeah, I can set this up to you know up to four players. So maybe just to finish off here, um, what we'll do is I'll just show you how this works with three, just so you can see you know up to three uh, machines happening all on the one one PC. Let's get into three machines. So I'll have a look at the directories here and under Model 2 Player 3 of exactly the same configuration. But now what I need to do to get three machines going, I'm going to have to change this network any file here. So we shall edit that. And just so we don't get ourselves confused, let's get this over to the side as number three. And we can see that we need to make a couple of changes here because this next port on number two needs to go over to here which is to 1980 so that will follow the the token ring and that's what we need to make a change there we can save that and this one is now is the receive port on 80 and then it goes back to 78 which is the receive port on the first machine there so that's all, all we need to do so hopefully that makes sense guys and you can easily string on more machines as you need them right so now i'm going to set up Oh, sorry, I'm going to start the emulator for player three. We'll stick that over the side. We'll go back to player two. We'll start the emulator there, about in the, in the middle here. And then we shall go to the first one and get number three, uh, get number one there, sorry. Okay, we have the three. Now, as I said, I'm going to load up the ROMs for the slaves first. Their arms for the slaves. Uh, and by the way, it's fairly easy to get into here under them. Uh, th there's a, um, I think in the help file, it actually shows you what the standard keys are. But F1 will get you into the setup to then change these settings to make them slave and the different car numbers. So you should be able to work that one out relatively easy. And those two are waiting you can see we'll go to the first one which is the master so you see this is slave this is slave 
number three, number two, and number one, and we should see these start stop. That one stopped, you can see. There we go. We've now got three. And you can see it says up to three races wanted. So you can you know straight away that we're now connected three way. Then we've got the red, blue, and the yellow car. You go all the way up to, to eight. And look at the performance, guys. This is no no difference to running one. There's nothing here. So I reckon, you know, we could keep going here. At least they're four running, no worries. Uh, and I've seen someone, I think, actually set up a whole eight player on, on one machine. It seemed to work fine. So there you have it, guys. I hope that helps you in setting up your own little Daytona USA and reliving the experience. This is a sensational game. I can't say it enough. I, I, it really is. So anyway, that's enough of the setup. Let's just uh, get this back up on the tripod and let's finish the session. So that's it, guys. I hope you got something out of that today. Have some fun with it. Have some fun. Now, if you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and also hit a like if you like the video. Tell your friends all that good stuff. So until next time, guys, make sure you take care. Enjoy your arcade as always. And of course, ciao for now.